No matter who we are, wherever we are, one thing unites us. The mysterious state of sleep and the experiences of dreams. These odd occurrences can stay with us for a lifetime, or fade within seconds. I've always been curious about the possibilities of these experiences, what they mean, and also whether we can have a say in the events. That is why I've decided to try and take dreaming further, and attempt to not only remember them, but also mould them, dictate them, control them. I plan to literally live my dreams. I'm Peter Corbin, and this is my Screen Life documentary about lucid dreaming. Daylight spreading. There are different ways to lucid dream, all of which demand a certain amount of preparation before you can expect results. This is why I gave myself a month to try and lucid dream successfully. Throughout my experiment, I recorded all the dreams I could remember from the night before into a journal, while at the same time practicing Stephen LaBerge's method of lucid dreaming, the mild technique. Stephen LaBerge's theory consists of choosing exact time to wake up, and I decided to choose five hours. After waking, I tried to remember as much of the dream as I could before preparing to sleep again. I then repeated, I'll be aware that I'm dreaming over and over again to myself. This was to block any other loose thoughts that popped into my head and only let myself think about my previous dream, to try and get back there. If I managed to enter a dream and feel conscious, I'd first try to keep myself calm so I wouldn't wake up. Then I'd attempt to control my actions and do something that would give me an inclination that I can control myself in this dream. All I could do then was sleep and hope that it would work. My first week of attempts passed without any success. I was pleased to have given myself a month for this experiment because I was finding it hard to only focus on the dream before I returned to sleep. I always knew that there would be nights when I failed, however. The second week passed with more incident. As despite the fact I hadn't yet managed to lucid dream, I was starting to dream more, as well as recognise when I was dreaming in my sleep. I saw this as a massive step in progress from my first week, as all I had to do now was remain calm and see whether I could remain asleep, as currently, I was getting too excited and waking up. I thought this would be a fun topic to explore, but after a couple of weeks, I started to wonder whether it had the potential to damage me. Despite doing some basic background checks before I started, I did feel I was messing with a part of my psyche I knew very little about. Exhaustion was a side effect that I thought I may feel, and although I experienced tiredness and it annoyed me, it never developed into anything worrying. What if I became addicted though? I was starting to find that I was obsessing slightly before I slept, wondering where I may soon be, and fantasising whether I could soon be capable of otherworldly things. If I was listening to trying to lose a dream, I wondered whether if I managed to experience the phenomena, I could get further involved. Even though I knew it was unlikely, disassociation, a detachment from surroundings, has become the worrying concern, becoming a husk, the lines blurred between living and sleep, I wanted to continue, although now I was feeling wary. The third week, a breakthrough. I was exactly here, talking to a girl who I used to know from school but didn't really like back then. I was knelt down, going through my school bag when she asked me a question in a hesitant, apprehensive voice. What did you do on Saturday? And then I thought. I thought. I didn't just go with my dream script as is custom. I thought about my response. Uh, I went to Falmouth with my dad. Exciting, I know. But I thought consciously and responded. I'm not sure what it was about that girl or that question that made me answer. But I'm sure as I can be, there was a lucid dream. The fourth week, however, I had more conclusive results. I'm not even sure of the scene, although I can loosely recall it was in some sort of building. Yet what I can remember is that unlike my other dream, I did something which I couldn't do in real life. I always had an idea as to what I would do if I felt conscious in a dream. And as I found myself thinking to myself, I'm aware I'm dreaming, I tried to fly. I can remember feeling my heart rate rising, warning me I was about to wake up, yet I managed to jump a few times. I didn't fly, but it felt as though it took me a while to land. It felt weightless, like swimming in water, and it felt as though I travelled further than the effort I put in deserved. As I landed softly from my third or fourth jump, I woke up. But I did it. I had broken the physics in my dream. Unless I just dreamt that the dream was lucid. I'm really pleased this project ended with some results. Even if I can't exactly prove them, 
or be 100% sure they happened myself. Sure. I didn't have a three hour dream where I shot lasers out of my eyes. And I didn't walk on the seabed with the fishes. But still, I've never hovered before. I enjoyed doing this project, even if it was a pain to wake up and it got a bit frightening. In the future, I might try to lucid dream again. But right now, I'd be glad to get some rest in my sleep.